Now, where it's going to end, it's going to take a good few years. The way I can see the market is that the banks are still trying to resolve their own problems. Now the government is starting to bail out banks, put some money in, and they've done this in a very quick period to stop the whole world collapsing, and I mean really collapsing. So, and it was done at such a fast speed that I don't even think the government has understood what they've done and how they're going to resolve these issues. So now we're going to see all different rules and regulations come in for the banks, and then they're going to, you know, obviously the banks have resolved, you know, they've got money in, but then they're going to see with the regulations, how it's going to happen, what the governments are going to want to see, how they're going to regulate the banks. Then next year, I believe, as we all come back in in January and through the year, the banks will start looking at each individual client. And in my opinion, the majority of property companies, whether it's commercial, whether it's residential, are all in negative equity. So you're saying now because, because the markets have actually dropped so drastically that the, the asset values and the, you know, the, the value of these companies have gone down so much that uh, the loan, is it the loan to... Well, the loan to value, um, if you, if you, you know, what made me make my decision over two years ago. It took me two years to start seeing, because I was involved in residential you know, for many, many yes. years. And we started off with returns of say 10, 12%. Now over that 10 year period we had the boom, so values were growing so fast, but the rents were not catching up. And we arrived two years ago at three and a half percent return. Now your cost of funds two years ago, or a year ago was at 5%, but everyone was relying on capital appreciation, not cash return. So then now, um, the banks with the problem they've got, they are asking for margins of say 2% up to 3%. Now if you put that on cost of funds, you're looking at 7-8%, 7 to 8% of cost of funds. Now you need a return above that. Mm -hmm. Now for that to happen from 8% to 3.5%, values have to drop over 50%, which they have. Yeah. Now on a positive side, I think next year obviously the banks will scrutinise all the customers, a lot of companies will be changing hands, a lot of properties will be changing hands, and we've all got to go back to the normal way of business. Real money into deals, yeah. um, not all these clever financial instruments that all the banking world used. Everyone's looking at capital appreciation. No one actually looked about cash flow. That's why the banks today have no liquidity. Now the balance sheet lender banks, i.e. the ones that you know, finance property and put this on their books, have got cash flow coming in. They're the ones who are still doing business. Yeah. As far as the rest of the banks, you know, the uh, big commercial banks that will do securitizations and these financial instruments will just cannot lend to each other. Now, next year, once this shuffle and has, has gone through, then you're actually going to see interest rates drop, drop. I believe by next year we'll see we'll be down to about three percent, maybe three and a half percent. Some people saying two percent even. Well, hopefully, yeah. but the quicker that happens, that will actually stop the property prices dropping any further. Right. Because it's all about investing. If you put your money in the bank, you can get 6%. You'd rather have it in property, or you'll get 7 or 8%. So as interest rates drop, it will stop the returns and the values dropping. Yeah. So, but this will all take two, three years. And then after that, we've, depending on how the government are going to regulate this position, you'll see steady growth in property again. Right. Now, property is always good. It's better than having money in the bank. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's what you pay for these assets. And how, you know, what returns are you actually achieving? Because we're not looking at capital appreciation. If you look at residential homes, I reckon you're going to see, you know, five to six years until you see some sort of growth. Right. And this is why I say with the government, because the government's obviously now going to own big chunks of the banks. Now, at the same time, the government's going to look at the whole country, and each, you know, each government will look at their own, their own country. So, they're going to be looking at problems of first-time buyers, they're going to look how they're going to regulate banks, and I think there may be some incentives for first-time buyers. Once the residential prices, like now is a perfect time to buy. Now? Yes, of course, if you can buy. It's all about what you pay for whatever asset. If you can look at all any property sector, every property is a great deal, but it depends what you're paying for it. Mm. And if you look at residential prices, they're actually becoming very, very desirable for first-time buyers but you have the problem with the banks of actually funding them at the moment. Yeah. So we've got two sides of the problem now. Well, you know, if you've, if, you're cash, if you've got cash today, like it's you fantastic, it's fantastic. You know, you can look at a lot of companies and the way they do business. And everyone can, after there is a problem, everyone can blame the banks, they can blame the market, but at the end of the day, you control your own company. Exactly. We took a decision two years ago, we decided to sell, we sold 750 million pounds worth of residential property. Now, 
we look back in hindsight and say, well, that was lucky or it was good business sense. It was a mixture of the both. But in, as far as Ability Group is concerned, right now has been the most busiest time of my whole business career. We're actually more busy now than we was in the boom period, just because of the, the opportunities that are coming through. And obviously we're cash, so we're taking huge, huge advantage, you know, advantage of the market. And, and in what areas, because it were, you know, when we last spoke, you used to tell me about Liverpool, about buying a, a hotel there, the Hilton, um, and you were speaking a bit more about leisure and hotel. Is that the area that you're now pursuing? Are you our, full, our full focus now is hotels, and since we last spoke, for example, we've got the uh, five-star uh, Hilton Hotel in Liverpool, uh, which is opening in summer of next year. We've recently bought Sion Park, big country estate in Chiswick, which is, we're building a five-star Hilton again which will open December of next year. Um, we bought the Dunblane Hotel, which is the old um, Staggis Hotel, it's a regional hotel, which has been developed at the moment, mm -hmm. refurbing the whole thing, which opens as well summer of next year. Um, we bought some uh, good plot of land at Luton Airport, which we built a 250 room Hilton Hotel, opens January next year, uh, not this year, the following. Mm -hmm. um, plus we've got the big estate in Sicily, which is working well. And we have various other projects, all with uh, solicitors at the moment, scattered around, which are all Hilton brands. So we're looking at building skyscrapers. But this is where we're taking advantage now, because the other side, the, you know, the good side of it is now, within next year is when you can actually buy a lot of assets that you have never been able to buy. We still have, we still have a lot of residential flats. We still have in Canary Wharf 600 odd flats. And it's, you know, to me, it's the best city in the world. And we have so much, we have so many people coming into London as well. So as far as business is concerned, it is a great, great location in London. But it's going to take time. Mm. The problem is all these companies that were building in the boom period, everyone was more interested in spending every penny into buying property mm. rather than keeping some cash reserves. So when you get to that stage, you end up in negative equity. And a lot of these people are going to disappear. Mm. So we need, you know, this couple of years it needs a good shuffle around and a good tidy up but I think with the government getting involved as well and bailing out these banks is a fantastic thing going forward and hopefully we won't see this same period again mm. you know for a very long time because mm. at the end of the day you know the banks were left to actually deal whichever way they wanted and there was all these financial instruments from one bank to another debt was being mm. you know over a hundred percent financing valuations were unreasonable yeah. because we all went away from the basis of business, and that is what is your cost of funds, what is your return. Your return should always be higher than cost of funds. Yeah. But everyone lost this, it was all about capital appreciation. Mm. So a lot of people are going to pay for this. Mm. Now for the layman, let's just say for people with normal jobs, you know, now is a period I think is for just tightening up, reflecting on everyone's household and the incomes they receive. People with homes, their, their personal homes, if you can just hang on to what you've got, yeah. forget about buying more and trying yeah. to expand. Just hanging on to your, your business now, hanging on to your personal homes. For the long term, the value of that asset will come back again. Mm. So it's this shuffle through period, this is what we've got to go through. But who knows, I personally don't think we've hit the bottom as yet. We haven't hit the bottom. We haven't hit the bottom. Yet. Because I remember you said last time that uh, the market at that stage was going to, you, you predicted, well, it was going to drop between 20 and 30 percent, and it did. So, it was worse than that. We've gone worse than that. <laughs> and you're one of the few people that actually said it. So, yes. we've, we've gone a little bit lower than that. So, how, how much further do you think the markets can drop the. Well, today, the, the problem is, is how do you put. How do you put. Like, you know, you could say to me, okay, this building's worth 100 million pounds, for example. Will you find me someone who can go and finance 100 million pounds, or even 70 million, or 50 million? There is no source of um, uh, loans coming in. This is the problem. So the money is dried up. So where is there a value? So now you're coming back to companies and individuals, high net worth individuals who have the cash, who will go in and bid, and people will take that. Take that. As soon as that happens, it devalues all the rest of the property as well.